up, nerds? We're back. Just when you thought you weren't gonna have enough of these thoughts. <laughs> Get it? Thought? Thought? They sound like the same word. <laughs> This, All right. This is clearly the level of humor we'll be operating on today. I apologize. <laughs> All right. Milady, please calm yourself. We still don't know who the culprit is. And there's just someone as an important and honored guest of the monster. I found his voice again. It's very, very low and round. Okay. So what? If we grab her by the collar, she'll definitely confess. <laughs> oh, really? What else are you going to do to her, Jessica? <laughs> You gotta fax her three pages in a row? <laughs> yeah, maybe four. <laughs> Fuck, the phone lines are down. <laughs> I gotta admit, listening to Long Potion, Longmont Potion Castle makes me really stressed. Yeah? Because I'm like, oh no, these are poor, like, innocent service workers <laughs> <laughs> having to deal with this shit. But I can't deny he's a master at his craft. <laughs> If I can just look her in the eye, I'll know. I'll see through her. A witch? Beatrice? Yeah, right. I'll expose her. And all for evil misdeeds? I'll expose anyone. I'll expose myself. No, don't. So I there. Please, no. Okay, you know what? Freezing on that one. Don't. Jessica never stopped moving. <laughs> Goda and Cannon chased after her, doing their best to convince her to stop, but... Jessica never lent them an ear. It's amazing how quickly this one has gone off the rails. Yeah? Like, already it felt like the relationships between people were pretty damn frayed. Yeah? Whereas in the first one, they kept a facade going for a good long while. You know? Before it came time for Natsuhi to whip out the gun <laughs> and start threatening people. Yeah, exactly. Uh, by the time we get to go around number eight, uh, they're going to be threatening each other on the boat. <laughs> before yeah. they get to the island. I have to wonder just how far off the rails we're going to get because I bet the answer is much farther than this. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, the witch's VIP room came into view. This VIP room was always sealed and never used. No matter what kind of guest came, Kinzo wouldn't let them in there. And yet the servants were always made to clean this room so it could be used at any time. So the servants had started calling this the VI witch's VIP room after their second shapeless master. Wow, rude. Jessica knew about this too. Shapeless. How about shapely, huh? <laughs> wow, rude. And she couldn't forgive the arrogance of the one who called herself a witch by staying in that room. The exterior of the door looked exactly like Kinzo's door. Wow. It's, <laughs> it's so convenient that we had this whole mansion outfitted with matching doors. Actually, that actually, yeah, that sounds about right, honestly. It makes it way easier to make artistic depictions of any room. Right? The Golden Witch was just a fairy tale. Come on, a witch? To Jessica, she was nothing more or less than the murderer who had brutally killed her parents. Question her, hear her pitiful excuses, make her sputter in pain, gasp in anguish. No matter how hard she pretends to be a witch, I'll teach her that she's just a stinking, sweaty human. As Jessica yelled with all of her strength, she hit the door to the VIP room. It definitely wasn't a knock. That sound was the beating of her anger's hammer, as if she was determined to break the door down if it wasn't opened. I noticed last time that uh, very uh, dis, dis like uh, there was some discretion in making sure the kids weren't the ones that were murdered first. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to continue. We'll see. <laughs> Open up, Beatrice. Come out. You hear me, right? Open up. There was no answer. Jessica grabbed the doorknob without any reservation, but she felt the resistance of the lock. She turned around to look at the two servants and spoke. The master key will unlock this, right? Use it. Milady, that would be honorably rude. Although Goda was flustered, he still tried to somehow calm Jessica's anger. After hanging his head silently for a while, Cannon pulled a master key from his jacket pocket. cannon son, are you sure? Yes, I'm fully aware it would be rude if she happens to be in there. At any rate, if Beatrice had nothing to do with that incident, all she has to do is give us a satisfying explanation. That's right. Exactly. Let me borrow that. Jessica snatched the master key from Cannon's hand and violently shoved it into the keyhole. Immediately, there was a small sound and she felt the lock click. Then, without asking permission, she flung the door open. Beatrice! Where are you? <laughs> She's probably out too busy getting a toe job. <laughs> but am I wrong? No. 
Come out. <laughs> Jessica rudely stepped into the room, which wasn't anywhere to be seen. That bitch. It's witch, but it's close. <laughs> Oh, so you believe now. What? No, I'm just saying if that's what you're calling yourself, the least <laughs> she can do is respect it. Sure, sure. <laughs> She's not here. Where the hell did she go? Yeah, she doesn't seem to be in here. No. Oh. Jessica, thinking she might be hiding somewhere inside the room, peeked behind the curtains and under the bed, but she couldn't find anyone. However, there definitely were signs that the bed had been used. And though it was only a vague sense, the atmosphere in the room felt a little soft. It wasn't the hard atmosphere of a place normally devoid of people like the chapel. You could definitely tell that someone had spent the night in this room. But she could not be seen. <laughs> in reality, neither Jessica nor Goda had met Beatrice. They had only been told by those who had met her that she looked like a double of the character in that portrait. So they were doubtful that her face really looked what her face really looked like. However, Cannon alone had met her. He understood what kind of being that witch was, what kind of personality she had. So he knew that forcing their way in here and search for her definitely wouldn't work out. She must be watching us bitterly flail about in vain from somewhere, sneering at us. It's one of my favorite hobbies. Why do you like to sneer? That's not someone something someone does with intention. Try it sometime. Okay. Oh, you're right. That's very therapeutic. Yeah. yeah. Hey, oh. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Comment retracted. I'll give you the one point, Beato. <laughs> <laughs> She's that kind of person. Because he was looking at things that way, Cannon was the first to find it. The other two were concentrating on finding the shadow of a person, so they didn't notice. <laughs> Near a water jug on the side table, there was a single sheet of letter paper. On it was a short, short message, and nearby was a fountain pen, which had probably been used to write it. Cannon had already come to understand the witch. After finding the corpses, they'd been overcome by rage and barged in here only to find no one. So of course the witch would mock them. Can't mock someone unless they know you know they know they're being mocked. So in other words, that's what this must be. Milady, there's something written here. Something written? What? Jessica dashed over and violently snatched the piece of paper away. She probably wasn't trying to be violent. She just couldn't control her strength right now. What the? Don't don't fuck with me. As soon as she read the message, Jessica went into a wild rage, crumpled the paper up and threw it. Then she grabbed a light stand by the bedside and violently swung it around, mercilessly hitting the walls and furniture with it. Damn, Jessica! The light bulbs all shattered at once, and the fragments were scattered across the room. Milady, please calm down. You'll hurt yourself. Let go. Damn it. Damn it. Come out, Beatrice. How could you do that to Mom and Dad? You think you scare me? I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll beat you to death, so show yourself. I told you to let go of me, damn it! This was written on the paper. Did you think I'd be that senile to just sit around here waiting for you to barge in? Oh, maybe. You're way too inelegant for this intellectual night. I can only imagine what the parents who raised you to be such a moron must have looked like. Wow, rude! All right, I saw them, and they looked just as moronic as you. Now their bellies are full in the land of sweets. Wow! Rude! It was the sort of thing that witch would write. It meant she predicted that one of the children who lost their parents would come running in here. She's hiding somewhere in this room. She must be rolling around laughing right now. Someone should make an acronym out of that. Yeah. Yeah. It'll come to me later. Yeah. Uh, the witch was that kind of person. She sneered at people's misfortune, using it to stave off the boredom of a thousand years. Hold it over. I'm telling you, you'll hurt yourself. No. I told you to let go. Damn it. Damn it. Ah. <laughs> go to snatch away the light stand Jessica had been holding. After all, if she kept swinging it around, she might end up smashing it against something, which could cause serious injury. I mean, yeah, you could really do some damage with a glass light stand. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> imagine there just being a glass light stand in the corner of the room. Yeah? Yeah, imagine how that might affect things. Yeah. If there was a glass light stand. That's a really it could, specific it could reference. could fall on someone. That, that no one has... Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to stop with that. No one's going to get that. You got it. Make sure to say hi in the comments. Nothing else. 
just high. Two, two word, two, two graphemes. To Goda's eyes, Jessica probably looked mad with rage, burning herself up with the flames of anger. But Cannon's eyes saw it differently. <laughs> Those were probably tears of sadness, hidden by rage. So, when the light stand was taken from Jessica, when she started crying on the floor, scratching at the carpet as the, almost as though she were groveling, Goda was surprised. But Cannon was not. Of course, she had lost her means of crying by lashing out in rage. Give me back my murder stand. <laughs> oh, ah. Dad. Mom. Ah. Considering that she was a daughter of the Usharomia head family, she was in a very shabby state. She scratched at the carpet with her fingernails, and even her feet were scratching. Jessica cried very, very hard, because if she didn't, her rage would start building up again and swallow her up. But over and over again, she remembered that humiliating message. I can only imagine what the parents who raised you to be such a moron must have looked like. Don't you call them morons. Both dad and mom were smart. Unlike me, they were really smart. Don't you call them morons. Take it back. Take it back. Oh, right. I saw them and they look just as moronic as you. Now their bellies are full in the land of sweets. Ah, damn it. I'll kill her. I'll kill her. I'll slice open her stomach and see how she likes it. Ah, ah. <laughs> All right, and then as Jessica cried and screamed, she triggered an asthma attack. The servants watching over her hurriedly ran up to her and rubbed her back, but that only provoked Jessica's wrath. The only reason Jessica doesn't outright win all conflicts is because asthma stops her berserker rage. She only <laughs> it's, it's like it's like the Ava units, you get five minutes, yeah, exactly. and then you're done. <laughs> God saw, saw how powerful she was and <laughs> that decided never... that she needed a limiter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? If you've got the time to do that, search for that bastard. Find him and bring him here. If you won't go, I will, and I'll kill him with my own hands. I'll slice open her stomach. She'll be tumbling through ointment <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> Don't Touch me. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> and Jessica got up unsteadily, and as her asthma continued, she went out into the hallway. Milady, your medicine, quickly. I will call Dr. Nanjo. Goda-san, would you leave this to me? Cannon had noticed. Goda, who was vastly separated from her in age, probably couldn't sense the tears in Jessica's heart. Cannon, who had noticed, had to be the one to support her. Conan said, are you sure? I believe Milady needs some time to cry right now, considering that she saw her parents killed like that. Hmm, you're right. Goda also understood, and he knew that Jessica and Cannon had shared a vague relationship with each other. So he understood everything and left it to Cannon. Very well. Why does Goda's face look like such a shit-eating grin? Yeah. I'll go back to Rosa's Hama. Please, take care of my lady. Yes. Leave it to me. Cannon's voice was frail, but he nodded firmly. After looking at his eyes, Goda nodded firmly as well. Goda was a veteran with many years behind him. He'd seen a great number of people in his life, so he knew the vigorous sparkle that could be found in the eyes of those who possessed self-control. He had surely, surely seen that in Cannon's eyes. So he would leave this to Cannon. And think about it, maybe this was the first time Goda had ever trusted Cannon and relied on him for a job. <laughs> Jessica, still suffering from her asthma, seemed to be heading towards her room, though she kept leaning against the wall. Cannon followed her wordlessly. If she asked for a hand, he would have leapt forward and supported her. But until Jessica did ask for that, he chose to hide himself, watching over her from a distance where he could come to her rescue at any time. When people feel their hearts are about to explode from sadness and want to have somebody by their sides, you can bet 10 billion of them would want to turn around and find someone in the place Cannon now stood. As he watched over Jessica from behind. Then finally, she doubled over in front of the door to the, her room. The asthma attack had stolen all of her strength. And her thoughts had gotten hazy from the lack of oxygen, making it impossible to even stand up again. But right then, Jessica didn't think she wanted someone to lend a hand. She still hadn't been able to overcome the flames of anger. Even if someone had offered her a hand with good intentions, Jessica would have wanted it to tear it right off then. She knew how unfair that would be, so she definitely wouldn't ask for help until she overcame the fiery anger burning inside. Jessica had probably lost the willpower even to call for help. 
but Cannon heard it. He definitely heard it. Cannon definitely heard that voiceless call for help. One shared by miserable grievers world round. Miserable griefers. <laughs> miserable. That's a different thing. And an endless scream that no one ever seems to hear. Cannon quietly knelt by Jessica's side and wordlessly offered a shoulder. Though Jessica kept coughing painfully, she accepted it, unlocked the door to her room, and entered. This way. I'll prepare your medicine right away. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica often said that when her asthma got serious enough, it hurt so bad that it felt like she'd vomit up her whole stomach. Her face was pale and her gaze wavered, and yet the coughing continued. Even so, her sadness was probably even stronger. After having her sit on the bed, Cannon took a bronchodilator from a cute little basket on a nearby side table and handed it to her. Jessica sometimes forgot to take her medicine with her. Whenever this seemed to have happened, Cannon would take notice and secretly carry around the inhaler from the first aid kit in the servant room, but he hadn't done so today. He scolded himself, as though wondering how he could call himself furniture after failing to bring it with him on a day like this. Then he remembered the day when he'd used that word and somehow betrayed Jessica's feelings. It jarred Cannon's heart, but he felt it would be indiscreet to think about something like that, considering how Jessica felt right now and he locked it up inside the depths of his heart. <sighs> you can do it, Jessica. <sighs> when she inhaled her medicine, Jessica's wild breathing calmed down bit by bit, and she was finally able to regain her composure. But she lost too much strength and willpower to get up from the bed. Bring Beato here so I can murder her while I'm laying down. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Are you all right, my lady? I'm all right. I'm all messed up over mom and dad, but after I cry a bit more, I'll be all right. Cannon regretted his poor choice of words. Did he really say, Are you all right to her? Was he really that clueless of the pain in her heart? This was what made him furniture. This was why he couldn't become human like Detroit. <laughs> I will be in the corridor thinking about Detroit. <laughs> yes, we are going to do that every time. <laughs> when, I, when I'm when I'm deeply bothered, I like to think about narrative driven video games by that one guy. The David Cage? Yeah, that one. Okay, that one. Okay. <laughs> if you need anything, please call me immediately. Cannon understood that she still needed some time to cry alone. <clears throat> he told her to call him at any time, bowed, and tried to leave the room. Ah. Uh. Do you need something? Jessica had spoken up as though she wanted him to stop, so Cannon had stopped. If she asks it, I'll do anything I can to help her. Right now, I'd become even a cane or a chair, but would help ease the pain in her heart. By doing that, I could make up for the pain I dealt to her heart on that day. For a while, Jessica stared into Cannon's eyes. It was as though her reason for stopping him was something she couldn't put into words. For a while, neither spoke. Jessica broke that silence with a small voice. I'm sorry. It's nothing. Would you tell Aunt Rosa that I want to be alone for a while? I won't let you be alone. Huh? I won't let you be alone. So, I will be in the corridor. Please call for me at any time. For just an instant, it looked like some kind of hope had flitted into Jessica's eyes, but it was very faint and disappeared like the first snow on the surface of a river. Thanks. Let me cry alone for just a bit. Yes, excuse me. Cannon bowed once again and closed the door. <laughs> he thought those words of his would give her some courage, but now it felt as though they'd actually hurt her for some reason. Why? He didn't know. Surely that was because he was furniture. That was why he couldn't grasp human sadness even now. 
So is this... Are they literally furniture? <laughs> Are we back to this where we think they might be some kind of homunculus scenario? Yeah, I, I don't know. I keep going back and forth on this. I mean, it's a possibility because we know that Shannon and Cannon were specifically raised in, in an orphanage and raised specifically for dealing with the family. And because we know magic exists, like, that's the kind of thing I could see happening. I don't, I personally don't think that's the case, mm -hmm. but if it happens, I won't be surprised. Okay. That, that's where I'm at right now. Um, but, you know, as Cannon repeatedly questioned himself, he walked down the corridor. He felt like the window at the corridor's end was coolly calling to him. Hey, big wow, boy. Wow, pretty cool. <laughs> hey, big boy, want to come on over here? <laughs> Check out this window. <laughs> <laughs> Coolest window in the town, yeah. <laughs> You know, you want a piece of this window. <laughs> it's not that funny. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, in the end, in the end, am I nothing more than furniture after all? I tried so hard and got so, so far. far. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> It was still pouring outside, a dark gray world. Even on days like this, Shannon would surely see the ocean and know that it was blue. But to my eyes, even if it cleared up, I would only see gray. Until I can understand the blue of the ocean, I'll be nothing but furniture imitating a person. You oh, I, okay, really we hear her theme. don't understand a woman's heart, do you? At times like that, you ought to silently remain by her side. <laughs> That's why your furniture. You. There shouldn't have been any trace of human life in this corridor. It had been an empty corridor filled with frigid air. But those scoffing words approached Cannon from behind. When he turned around, he saw that witch. That witch who hadn't shown herself when Jessica had searched for her with a rage bordering on madness, and who had left that sneering letter to toy with Jessica. There are three ways to hurt a woman. Only three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surprising, huh? Oh. Number two will shock you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me teach you them. One is to hurt them with a blade. Another is to hurt them in their heart. You can combine this with the first method. Oh, I see. <laughs> Diligently taking notes. <laughs> the last way is the most difficult and most effective method of hurting them. And yet it can hurt them without you even realizing it. Do you know what I mean? How could I know? I don't even want to know. That's too bad you're going to know it. <laughs> Excuse you. It's to betray their expectations. No living being is more of a dreamer than a woman. They make up dreams all on their own and end up hurting their own selves. A distant man like you hurts women the most. You couldn't understand. You have no idea how deeply you've wounded Jessica. After all, your furniture. <laughs> I have no intention of playing along with your nonsense. Did you appear only to sneer at me? That's kind of my thing, bro. <laughs> I, well, I mean, I guess that's true, but like, do you derive pleasure from doing this or? <laughs> like, what's the point? Yeah, I ask myself that sometimes. Only sometimes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't be so full of yourself, Furniture. You aren't worth sneering at. Not that that will stop me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting very mixed signals here. Yeah, I really have to work on that. <laughs> Still, though you may not be worth my time on your own, if the two of you are gathered, that's all I need. The pleasure that comes from laughing at the fates of young couples never tires me. What you say? <laughs> you have no chance to survive uh. making a time. <laughs> you, you don't mean Milady is going to be. Whoa, Beto face again. I need two who are close for the sacrifices of the second twilight. The two of you truly are convenient. Wait. Don't misunderstand. Lady and I don't have that kind of relationship. 
We can't become the sacrifices for the second twilight. Then fucking get to it. Chop, chop. What? That's not... A There's a whole consent thing involved. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you hurt Jessica. That's why you cannot become human. <clears throat> yeah. Become human like what? <laughs> like if you don't give me a specific example, I, ca I can't... I can't visualize it if you don't give me a specific example. Every single time that you bring up the phrase become human. Okay. I'll give you I'll give you a metaphor. Okay. Picture picture a uh, canteen with a hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> Not the canteen again. We've been over this. You screw you screw on the cap, you turn it upside down, and bam, fully functional canteen again. <laughs> <laughs> then, there should be no problem. If you won't admit you have feelings for Jessica, I can accept that. But I will kill her. Why? You idiot. Isn't it obvious? It'll be fun to kill her and see your face twist in pain. Why else? Damn, Fang Beato face. Have we seen Fang Beato face? No, this one's new. That is new. But we've seen that one before. Yeah. But they have more. Oh, uh, yeah. That's so good. Following the rules of the ceremony, 13 people will be sacrificed on my whims. However, there's no rule that says I can't kill more. <gasps> right. Yeah, that. Well, no, no, that did happen last time. Yeah. Because, um. Nazi challenged her to a duel. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, so there were there were excess deaths. If it amuses me, I can kill any number of people. So I will. Make me laugh as hard as I can. Cannon the furniture. I, but see, I get the feeling she's furniture. Ye she's yelling it like 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 imagine some. Uh, um, uh, you have to ham it up to like. Uh, uh, I can't remember JoJo levels. I, I'm I'm bad at being a ham. I am not practiced at okay. it. Okay. Cannon the furniture. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um. <clears throat> at that time, Cannon definitely heard Jessica scream. When he blinked and looked down the corridor, the witch who'd supposedly been there so nonchalantly just a second ago was gone. At that moment, he was just standing there all alone in the corridor, doing nothing. And the person he wanted to protect was asking for help from far away in that direction. It was obvious what he should do. It wasn't logical. It was an electric reflex. Without a trace of hesitation or distraction, there was a person he wanted to protect, and she was asking for help. And at that moment, he genuinely wanted to be the person by her side. The person by her side to be him. When he flew into Jessica's room, the scene that greeted his eyes was a bizarre one. The room had become a fantastical world where a blizzard of gold-colored specks danced almost as though the gold leaf had been scattered inside a snow globe. No, that's not it. I've seen this spectacle before. This isn't gold leaf. It's countless golden butterflies. Beatrice's minions. Jessica was surrounded by countless butterflies, waving her hands around frantically, trying frantically to drive them away. Milady. Cannon couldn't help. <laughs> Cannon rushed towards Jessica and violently brushed the cloud of butterflies away. Their butterflies, which were sickening despite their beauty, surrounded Jessica's face trying to crawl in through her mouth and nose. Jessica choked violently, almost as though the butterflies were triggering an asthma attack, mocking her. But when Cannon ran towards her, the butterflies stopped attacking and began to dance an elegant rondo around the pair. Cannon coon. Cannon coon. It's okay. While there's still life in me, I won't let anyone lay a finger on you. Come out, Beatrice. Are you happy now? She stood guard in front of Jessica, who was using an, her inhaler and seemed to be in pain. Cannon yelled into the empty air. And when he did, the empty air did indeed laugh back, satisfied. <laughs> Thank you, empty air. Then she showed herself. Stop. What? What? What's the? What's the thematic importance behind <laughs> about, behind the outfit changes? Is she in the other outfit when she's like, I guess, trying to pass as human, and then she's maybe. I, I don't understand the significance behind them. There clearly must be some kind of significance, but I don't know what it is. And then she showed herself. Wait. 
two there are like, Beatos. <laughs> there aren't like two of her, are there? There could be. Maybe more. I just I, wait. It's all Beatos. <laughs> it's Beato. Always, always has been. <laughs> I was just wondering, like, what the significance behind our outfit changes are. Then I'm like, what if she's not changing up? But why would that? Why would there be? Just fun. Just file that one away for later, okay? Just put that one in the back, and we'll we'll come back to it. Fun fact: There's no clothes there. It's just magic. Oh, <laughs> that's that's bloody convenient actually <laughs> no it's not I get cold very easily <laughs> so witches do get cold yeah what do you do in the winter uh, do you wear like actual clothes on top of the non clothes uh, usually I set people on fire for warmth that you know what that was the answer I was expecting <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Then she showed herself. It wasn't in response to Cannon's demand. It was obviously because appearing and steering would bring them even more humiliation. And plus, it was more fun. It is. <laughs> now everything fits to the plot. Now you're a carp on the chopping board. No. Since we've got a pair of you, should I call it duck with green onions? I'm really hungry. I'm losing the <laughs> plot here. <laughs> I have a feeling there might have been something more significant lost in translation there, but I like to think that she's just, like, distracting, distractedly hungry. <laughs> like, oh, are you yours? Are any of you too hungry right now? We should, we should go get something to eat real quick. Just, can we put a, can we put a pause, a, a pause on this and, yeah, yeah. What do you want? I'm going to get, some, do you have something like Doritos or something? Just, just like some finger food, you know? Just something to snack. So I know it's bad for me, but... <laughs> <laughs> you, Beatrice, please stand back. I'll protect you, milady. When the princess and knight come together, it's inevitable that the witch will appear. Yes, why don't you show me how much power Kinzo's furniture can muster? <sighs> she snapped her fingers with a piercing sound. When she did, a blizzard of gold butterflies was stirred up began to form a small mountain as they whirled around in a circle. Just like the swirling of a cold, wintry wind that builds up a mountain of leaves. From that mound of gold, a hand sprouted, and it appeared as though the resident of the world below was crawling up from beneath the ground. What the fuck? <clears throat> what is this? What the hell is this? Jessica couldn't comprehend what she was seeing right now, and her mouth kept flapping open and closed the bite of wisdom seen in those trying to understand something incomprehensible. What the fuck? What the deuce? That thing crawling... It gets a sprite? <laughs> no, 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 hold on. The fact that... I know this is metagaming, but the fact that it gets a sprite is super important. Maybe. That thing crawling up was probably an attendant who served the witch to be wearing a uniform suitable for one who served, but its face was wrong. It looked strange. It was covered with pitch black hair, breathed rotten breath, and its eyes were filled with the same strange subterranean glow as lava. And to symbolize its non-human status, it had two horns. It was the figure of a goat-faced attendant who served the witch. Ah. I, okay, just, th that took a turn. All right. By now, Jessica had no idea what she should say. All this happening in front of her couldn't be explained with common sense. She couldn't do anything except open and close her mouth. Meet Satan, he's my bitch. Jessica hadn't realized. She hadn't realized. <laughs> oh, can I meet him? I've always wanted his autograph. <laughs> All right. They dabbled with Satanism in high school as well. <laughs> I thought it was pretty neat. <laughs> Did it turn out to be for me though? <laughs> It was during my atheist phase when I was trying to find a religion that would be suitable for me. <laughs> Listen, it was a bad time, okay? Okay. <laughs> Battler a high school atheist? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> she hadn't realized that this island had already been cut off from the rules of our world. But there were some things even she could understand. This goat attendant served the witch and was after her life. Apparently, the witch had already given it the order. She was looking at Cannon with an expecting gaze. 
She looked at him with an expectant and therefore challenging gaze, so asking him how he intended to protect this, his maiden. Though the attendant had looked especially bestial while crawling to its feet, you could see in the way it carried itself that it possessed more than enough grace to be worthy of serving the Golden Witch. And you could tell that it was overflowing with the joy of furniture wanting to meet its master's expectations. Well then, why don't you show me? Let's see the power of Kinzo's furniture. This time, don't get the wrong idea, okay? Don't forget that you're furniture, got it? If you try to continue playing the human even now, this won't be settled by your death alone. <laughs> the goat attendant made what seemed to be a silent, respectful bow. Was it directed at its master, or was it offered to Ken and its opponent? Then on the attendant's hand, a blade of wicked malice appeared. Jesus Christ! Okay, now- oh, fuck! He's got a D-sword! <laughs> he does have a D-sword! What the hell is that? Oh my god! He's got a D-sword! Oh no! Cannon, you've got no chance, my dude. We don't know that Cannon doesn't. <laughs> now imagine Cannon as like a 20-something shut-in <laughs> with living in an abandoned shipping container on the roof of a building and actually, you know what? Yeah, all that checks out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what? Yeah. Jessica had been unable to understand what was happening before her eyes for a while now. All she understood was that this glow in front of her existed for the purpose of ending her life. And right now, that was enough. Cannon spoke quietly to Jessica, who was hiding behind his back. Milady, please stay back against the wall. Never let your back leave the wall. What? <laughs> it's only right for the maiden to obediently hide behind the great knight's back. I do hope you enjoy the pleasure of having your life protected by a man. Now... Cannon, let's have a look at your blade. Does Cannon get a D sword? Yes. Hell yeah! Cannon gets. That's why they all hold their arms in that particular position, so that way they can have D swords. Yep. No one here has read fucking Chaos Ed. No one knows. Maybe they have. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Beautiful. At least when it comes to giving birth to furniture. Wait, wait, was that so that Kinza was just that 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 Cannon was just able to do? What do you mean? I kind of thought like it was just like, oh, this is a magic duel Beatrice is giving him a sword or whatever. No. No. He was just able to summon a fucking sword whatevs? Yeah, Kinzo Kinzo is a sorcerer. And he's <laughs> This is doing this shit and training furniture to serve his, his whims and use magic and shit. Holy f- Give me a moment. That recontextualizes a couple things. Also, it's apparently Mfrag. Oh yeah, okay, great. Um, <laughs> hey, Cannon, the baby is you. The sequel was better! <laughs> because that means, like, when he was running off to his... Supposedly to run off to confront her himself in the last go-round, he actually had something to stand on. Absolutely. Which, I was wondering if that was the case last time when that happened. Because it was like... Wait, how'd you know about D-Swords already? I didn't know anything about D-Swords oh. already, but I was wondering if it was the case that he confronted her because he felt he had a chance ah versus just a cry of rage or whatever gotcha and it turns out that's right yeah he did think he had oh a my chance because he does what the fuck why a thing like this can't even be used to trim the roses wait who's talking a thing like this can't even be used to trim the roses can Canon Coon, what's? I I didn't want to show you. So you finally <laughs> whipped it out. <laughs> All right, everyone, get your gladius jokes out right now. Sword fight for my pleasure. <laughs> if they're wielding D swords, does it make this the D club? Yes. How does it feel to expose your subhumanity in front of the girl you care for? Oh my god, are they literally not human then? Yeah. Oh 
Oh, hold on. I'm having a moment over here. <sighs> All right. All right, we're doing this. Be silent. <laughs> That's kind of not my thing. <laughs> So, you'll act composed, even though you're really burning with wrath? Yes, they do say that truly hot flames burn a cool blue. Is that how you are now? How come his D-sword is the fucking... Like, the fucking beam sword from Halo? Yeah, I've been wondering that too. <laughs> There's no way I can kill you with my power. You are the moon. I could never smash the moon by throwing a rock. However, in order to manifest yourself, you've had to reflect your image off the surface of the water. You throw a rock at the sur- Oh, then you throw a rock at the surface of the water. You might be able to disturb the moon moon's image for some time. But that doesn't mean the moon has been smashed. You'd need to say super laser piss or something for that, <laughs> so I hear. We're finally back to it. Okay. <clears throat> so. Until this life of mine is over, I'll keep on striking your reflection. I like it, Cannon. Begin, Furniture. So does that mean that any of the servants that have the uh, Golden Eagle can summon D-Swords? Almost certainly. Can the family members? I bet they can't. I bet they're in the dark. I bet they cannot. Because I bet it's a specific thing about them being raised as quote-unquote furniture. Sword fights? Ah, oh, yeah. I'll just I'll just have a quick toke while you two fight it out in the corner. <laughs> it's a big fucking climactic <sighs> battle. Oh, what a beautiful curve. I'm talking about your sword. You're talking about the sword? <laughs> what a beautiful curve your sword has. They're fighting like with each other and it gets all climactic and what's it? Is it Suzai Sh Say Shonen starts playing? That's the one. What? That's the uh, that's the one from Chaos Head. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I had to look up the title of it because I couldn't remember it off the top of my head. But remember the climactic scene? Yes. Yes. God, what a very flawed anime. <laughs> <laughs> the witch's words of admiration broke the silence, and for just for an instant, they broke Jessica's paralysis. Am I? Dreaming? Yes. Come, furniture of the witch. I'll beat you down to the hell you came from. Grr. Arg. <laughs> God damn it, Canada just knows how to sword fight. Yeah. Why? A strand of red had been left on Ganon's cheek. The witch saw this and grinned broadly. <laughs> Feel free to mutter excuses about how your instincts still haven't returned quite yet. This isn't fair. There's just like eight frames of lag on this. <laughs> this is bullshit and you know it. <laughs> Come on. I refuse to play the, on this connection until you implement rollback netcode. <laughs> Learn to buffer your input, scrub. <laughs> Cannon could stay strong. It's okay. I won't die just yet. Whoa, Whoa what? <clears throat> oh, wait, he gets <laughs> the curve drawn by the go to tendons blade drew a large arc in empty space. Cannon wasn't there. He was behind it. Nothing personnel, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Go back and await your master's return. Die. Omni Slash! <laughs> this is so fucking ridiculous! Welcome what to Umineko. What the fuck is happening? Buckle the fuck up. I, I was clearly, clearly underestimated the length. Of the, I I thought I had the score kind of figured out, like, after the first go round. No, no, clearly. I know nothing. I am but small child. All right. In this, If this battle of drawing sparkling curves was chess, 
and cannon coming from behind was check. And press, and press, and press, and press. You don't have to do that, IRL. I have to press. Use seven moves and make it mate. <laughs> Use seven moves and make it mate. Perhaps the goat attendant hadn't been get granted the ability to go into death throes. As its knees buckled and it fell over, it broke into a bunch of gold butterflies with a pop. So there was no sound of it hitting the ground. Even those unable to understand this battle would surely realize that cannon had been magnificent. Hmm. Lag. <laughs> so. Learn to buffer your inputs, bitch! <laughs> so, it couldn't win against a handmade piece. It seems you aren't quite that pathetic. You're next, Beatrice! Fucking try me, I love getting stabbed. Well, I mean, we already established <laughs> that he knows it's fruitless, but... The instant Cannon's blade sliced diagonally through the witch's form like a knife through butter, she turned to gold and burst. She scattered into several thousand gold butterflies, and for just an instant, the room was filled with the color of twilight. It was just as Cannon himself had said. Slicing Beatrice was the same as slicing the surface of the water where the moon was reflected. The witch's form, with an ordinary expression on its face, as though she'd been here the whole time, was right behind Cannon. Don't say it. <laughs> don't. D I, I know you're going to say it. Just don't. Nothing. Listen, it was cool when I did it. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> You've provided quite an entertaining show. Out of respect for that, I thought about letting you off the hook. But your rudeness now has made me change my mind. Don't lie. I won't let you kill Milady. Even if that's impossible, I won't let you kill her while I still live. You can't even do that much. Do not speak, furniture. Be silent, furniture. Know your place, furniture. Cannon Kun isn't furniture. Huh. Hole. Oh. <laughs> you have to do it right. <laughs> if you don't do it right, it doesn't count. Okay. And what makes you think that? I don't need a reason. Cannon Kun is Cannon Kun. No, his real name's different, but a name doesn't make him furniture. It Can does if that name happens to be, like, Duvet. <laughs> or, I don't know, an Ottoman? No, no. End table. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Canon Kun has his own way of living. That's a noble thing, and it's something he gets to decide for himself. You say he can't have an opinion because he's furniture, that he can't live his own life because he's furniture? <sighs> That's wrong. Milady, you mustn't provoke her. No, I've got to make this clear. Canon Kun isn't furniture, he's human. Why? Canon Kun rushed to save me of his own free will, and he stood in the path of a fearsome witch like you. He had so many chances to just let me go, but he didn't. Self-sacrifice is part of the noble spirit that only humans have. It's actually a phantasm, but I, I get what you're... <laughs> that means Canon Kuhn's human. I, f I finally become human? Yes. So take it back. Don't you call Canon Kuhn furniture again. Milady. No, really, it's a homunculus scenario, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Be silent, human. Let's end this quickly, since this is just the second twilight after all. Now, I shall sacrifice the two who are close, who have acknowledged each other's dignity. Well then, arise, forgive the sin, one of the seven stakes of purgatory, lust! Arise, chicken! <laughs> Wait, no, that's not the time for this! No! <laughs> shield! Shield cannon! <laughs> The witch summoned her furniture with a mixture of laughter and anger on her face. Whoa! Laughter and anger on her face. What the fuck are you? 
I make all my weapons into cute girls. What the it's fuck way are better you? that No, way. hold on. What the fuck are you? Who are you? What are you doing here? <laughs> what? Apparently Asmodeus of Lust, huh? Okay, I uh, the, the full the full panties out dress. Yeah. Is... <laughs> Why is it like that? I don't know what to tell you. Asmodeus of Lust. Right here. Wait, who's talking? Uh, Asmodeus of Lust right here. I've had enough of this farce. Quickly, execute the second twilight. Don't keep me waiting, got it? The stakes are actual people. Oh, okay. As you command. A another weirdo showed up. What the up. fuck is happening? Why is it this one episode has just had so many fucking game changing revelations in it? Welcome to every 07th expansion thing. Jesus! It took Canon less than an instant to understand. That goat face from a second ago had been nothing more than a pawn to the witch. However, this newly summoned furniture was a game piece with a vastly different value. Wow, must be pretty lucky to be given such wonderful prey. <laughs> you scared? How cute. Yeah. Come, furniture of the witch. I won't be killed by you. <laughs> You're acting pretty smart for a dunce who can't even follow me with his eyes. Here I go, okay. Hey, hey, where do you want it? Where do you want it? You want me to pierce you? Answer me, cutie. I'll pierce you good wherever you want. <laughs> Come on, answer me, cutie. Don't call me cute. Wait, is that is that a desirable trait? <laughs> am I indeed cute? Jessica, am I cute? Yeah. Damn it. Okay, you can call me cute, but n no, no, only Jessica can call me cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she gets a witch laugh, too. Here I go, you dunce. Come on, try and follow me, you blind idiot. <laughs> Wow, she fucking just did all of YYZ on his fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what it sounded like? You know when old, um, older cartoons, you know that particular, like, um, musical feel that would be used to, to play when someone's kind of winding up to run away? Yeah. The do -do 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 yeah. Do -do -do yeah, that, that thing. That's what it reminded me yeah. of. Yeah. I need to know the, learn the word for that. Milady. I couldn't follow it with my eyes, but my guess was spot on. Serves you right. Cannon's back had been the target, but Jessica had predicted it. She predicted the witch's target would be the complete opposite of fair and honest, his back. But she had no way to block it. She hadn't planned on it being some act of self-sacrifice. She just couldn't think of any other way to protect Cannon's back. So she could do nothing but block it with her own back. The furniture of the witch, which had changed its form into a demon stake, was buried deep into Jessica's back. It was an obviously fatal wound that reached as far as her lungs. When she saw this, the witch let out a loud, evil laugh. <laughs> because it had hit where the witch had predicted. Everything, everything, was as the witch had predicted. What's wrong, Cannon? Milady Jessica just got killed while you still live, didn't she? <laughs> yes, yes, that's it. That face, that look on your face is what I wanted to see. <laughs> How truly enjoyable. That's enough. Die, die, make me laugh. Come, arise, forgive the sin. One of the seven stakes of purgatory. Wrath! Is it literally just the same thing, just with new hair? Yeah, new hair. I put them all in cute outfits. <laughs> We're all in cute matching outfits. Yeah. <sighs> Satan of Wrath. Right here. This prey is yours. Eat him up right now and close the curtain on his stage. <sighs> if you were a human, I'd say it's time for you to step down. But since you're furniture... Maybe I should say it's time for the stage manager to carry you behind the stage. I am not furniture anymore. I won't doubt that again. <laughs> well, you'll have five <laughs> seconds to not doubt it, so enjoy it. Oh, what's this? Oh, you want to be killed by me again? <laughs> Your chest is so warm it... Hmm. They remember the last go around, huh? Well, I guess it's because they're on Beto's side. They yeah. probably would, right? <clears throat> But just cannon. It's so warm and 
Feels so good to pierce it. Come on, let me have another taste, okay? Come on, won't we make me feel really good with that hot, fresh blood and that warm chest of yours? Come on! <laughs> Come on, just, just a little bit. Let me get in there. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my, uh... That was my rendition of Neil Peart's live solo de Tromler. <laughs> there was no way to block it. The sound of water, a woodpecker filled the entire room. Before he could blink, it was just already right in the center of his chest. When you take a piece in chest, the rules say that it's impossible for your opponent's piece to defend itself. So this was an obvious result in accordance with the rules. Cannon landed on his knees, and he apologized. Not to the witch, and not to Milady. He apologized to Jessica. I'm sorry. I couldn't protect you. Don't worry about it. You were really cool. Cannon finally fell over. He landed next to Jessica, and the two lay there like the constellation Gemini. You know, Cannon Kun, you aren't furniture anymore. Wait, you're still alive? If I kick it first, that means I'm still I still technically fulfilled my oath. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was too late in realizing that. I wanted to ask you what your real name was. My real name is Ah That's In his last moments, Cannon wanted to tell her his real name. But Jessica had already fallen into a sleep from which she would, would never awake. So Cannon's real name, which he had protected until today. In the end, he couldn't tell it to Jessica. I became hum Those were the last words Cannon left behind. Like Detroit. <laughs> So Cannon's real name is, uh, uh, oh, what a strange name. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, we're getting so much. <laughs> there are things that need explanations going on here. Don't worry, there will be more. Oh, God damn it. It's reminding me a bit of when I played through a Aegis Rim. Mm. I remember telling you about that, how the game was a continual series of revelations up until the very last minute, and it felt like it should have worn out, but it didn't. Yeah. You telling me that's going to be... This yeah. Is gonna, oh, God. I'm sure it will. Oh, my body's ready. Don't make me laugh, furniture. Even after a hundred years, furniture will still be furniture. Unless you, like, cut it apart and use it as, like, scrap wood. Or, but what like, if you then rebuild it from that scrap wood? Don't get Quick, she's, she, on me. <laughs> she's distracted by the Theseus. I'm going to steal her controller. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever heard of anyone stupid <laughs> enough to dig a grave for their furniture when they throw it away? You smash furniture to pieces and make firewood, so that all that's left is ashes. You know, for all this dehumanizing talk about him being furniture, he still counts as a full person when it comes to fulfilling the... Uh... Yeah? So... Witches only have fully human furniture. It's more fun that way. <laughs> oh my god. That's how it is. Furniture gets no tombstone. It seems you believe death means an end to your humiliation, but that's naive. I'll, I'll show you what it really means to disgrace the dead. I like to think that she's just there. Like, Cannon's already been dead. Yeah. For a good while. And she's just there gloating on top of his corpse for no reason. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's like, what are you getting out of this? They're taking a puff from her pipe. The witch breathes the smoke at Cannon's corpse. <laughs> Can I have a hit of that? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. What was that? It could be anything. <laughs> what do you mean? Could be any? Do you just go into a kitchen and pull out like random leaves? <laughs> Would you like to get some oregano? <laughs> <laughs> the, the last time I looked what was in there, it was another smaller copy of myself screaming back. So I stopped thinking about it. And <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> when she did, Cannon's corpse softly floated up into the air and disappeared as though it had been eaten by a mouth in empty space. The witch played dirty until the very end. The corpses of the pair who managed to understand each other in the end 
We're not even permitted to be close. Someone had been watching that probably would say morbidly, so this is what you meant by disgracing the dead. However, Beatrice was far crueler than that. The reason for that would soon become apparent. Oh, will it? Will it? What the fuck have you done? This is fun. This is no. called having fun. Loosen up, Battler. None of this is fun! Loosen up more. Wait, we went back and... Hmm. We went back in time. That's strange. That's... odd. All right. So that all happened. Yeah? Yeah. And... I see. So it has begun. <laughs> yes. God, now I'm looking at these two wondering how they're going to summon their D-sorts. Yeah. God, why? Ah! That's just knowledge I have to deal with now. Yeah. Yes. Uh. <laughs> Even though Kinzo had received the news of six deaths, his emotions did not waver. The expression on his face as he gazed out the window was a smile, as though his opponent in a chess game had just made a spectacular move. It's hard to imagine that such an expression would ever appear on a father who had lost so many children at once. Goda and Cannon followed Rosasama's orders and called the police. After that, she ordered us to follow your orders, Master. What shall we do? This island has already been cut off from the real world. Mere phones will serve no purpose. What about the magic phone we have in case of emergency? <clears throat> that one will serve a purpose. Okay. But what, let me guess, not until go round number six, right? <laughs> Should I have them stop? Until the roulette is finished, what they do to pass the time is up to them. Let them do as they please. Yes, sir. Um, what should we, what should we tell Rosa-sama? Didn't I say they should pass the time as they please? They can sing if they want, dance if they want. They can leave their friends behind. <laughs> They're even free to hang themselves by the neck or jump into a boiling kettle. Until 13 people die, they can spend their time as they like. If that's too boring, then they can wonder about whether 6 times 9 equals 42 or something. It doesn't. But they can wonder about it. It's not. <laughs> no, that's... Oh, uh, why would you do that? I didn't major in math. Oh. I majored in the dark arts. Oh, now this is... Oh, no, hold on. This is hurting me now. Mm. Okay. I just have a demon I summon for that. Okay. Okay. He told me it's 42. So it is. <sighs> it's not, the, but it's... Uh... Oh. Oh it's, <laughs> oh, it's a Douglas. I... Okay. That's the answer to the mystery of humanity and the universe. Oh, it's a Doug. Sorry, I apparently am stupid. <laughs> I think that's probably Shannon. Y yes, my apologies. Shannon cowered in fright at this sudden rage. Genji, I, I like the idea that Kinzo's red Douglas Adams. <laughs> <laughs> Just in addition to all of his mag magic, he he's he's red Douglas. He knows the master. He's he, not and not just any Douglas Adams. He's red. Uh, he's red the Dirk Gently ones as well. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I still, I still haven't read the Dirk Gently books. I forget what happens in them. I really want to, but then I know as soon as I read them, then there'll be no more Douglas Adams left for me, and that <laughs> it's kind of a that's kind of a uh, sad feeling. You can always reread Hitchhiker's Guide for the twentieth time. I absolutely need to. I my mother made the mistake of getting me that book, The Omnibus, when I was quite young, because she'd always have to get me books to keep me busy in church so I yep. wouldn't bother people in the middle of the sermon. Huh? And the problem was that one of them was Hitchhiker's Guide, and I couldn't stop bursting into laughter oh, in the no. middle of the preaching. <laughs> I've got the uh, hardcover omnibus actually over here. So do I, but not over here. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Genji made a gesture as though telling her not to speak out of turn. Shannon couldn't help but regret saying too much. <laughs> However, you two are also free to do as you wish. Genji. And Shannon, too. You have done well, serving me until today. Y your words are too good for me, but, um... We are furniture who have sworn to serve the Master. We stand ready to serve you, no matter the time. Until the very end. 
Oh, in that case, just uh, can you bring me like a fruit punch? <laughs> <laughs> Get a little peckish up here. I want to tell you about everything. Shannon, I am going to write a will. I shall need you to transcribe for me. Please, Genji, my usual drink. Probably Shannon. Huh? Y yes, sir. Nanjo often recommended that Kinzo write a will because of his health, but each time he had, Kinzo had gone mad with rage. Ever since then, you'd think will would have been the word Kinzo hated most. After hearing such a word come from his lips, Shannon couldn't help doubting her ears for an instant. Shannon hurriedly prepared the side table and some writing paper. Genji followed his orders and began preparing that usual green, evil drink. Imagine it's just the, uh, the, that one green, high C citrus fruit punch. <laughs> but with, like, vodka. <laughs> nice. I'm ready. <clears throat> hmm. Where should I begin? Shall I also speak of my life? It would be fun to leave behind a record of my most memorable game. It can be truly amusing to read the records of old games from centuries past, to journey in search of those players' thoughts. So, should the game record of my life lead those in the future to go on a journey and search for my thoughts? Hmm. For a while, Kinzo pondered over where he should begin, strutting all over the room with his hands behind his back. Master, here. Ah, yes. Thank you, my friend. Well then, if I am to speak of my life, I must begin by writing of my meeting with that witch. Shannon, begin writing. My first meeting with Beatrice took place a long way back. Beatrice is a land of contrasts. <laughs> what year of the Showa era was it? Make sure to use double-sized margins. <laughs> what font are you using? <laughs> it must have been at the end of the war, so... Wait, which war? <laughs> I'm extremely old. Oh my god. <laughs> we took enough time to regain our calm, and we each swore to our parents that we'd catch the culprit. It would be a lie to say we weren't still torn up. Even now, if we let our guards down just a little, we'd probably start going on a rampage just like Jessica, letting our emotions show with some kind of violence. According to what Goda-san said after he got back right now, Kanon-kun was looking after Jessica. <laughs> Apparently she was still very emotionally high-strung. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> He's all better now. Here's the other thing. Goda's also holding his arm in the same position as the other servants. That's interesting. For purpose of holding a D-sword. And he doesn't have the eagle. Right. So I don't know if that's... Because conservation of detail. Like, I assume this was just like a, a particular pose, but... I gotta wonder if that means that they're gonna get a D-sword at some point. Maybe. Maybe and yes, we're still one. calling them D-swords, okay? Get over it. <clears throat> we don't have a better word for it. I see. Thank you. Maybe a young kid would be better at understanding a young kid's feelings. It would probably be better if we left them alone for now. Rosasan, there's nothing more to be gained by reminding her. The phones may not be working, but tomorrow the boat will come, and we shall be able to raise the pulver. We shall leave this place as it is for the places in Russell Garfield. I agree with Dr. Nanjo. Staying in a place like this for too long will lead be bad for your health. All the candy and such. <laughs> I mean, it's in wrappers, so it's fine. <laughs> I don't know why ever. Let us return- Okay, that's not the point, I get it. <laughs> Let us return and make some black tea. Yeah... I agree with that. Shy. Battler Kun, George Kun, are you ready? Let's lock up here. Battler removes his arms from the inside of his parents' bowels. <laughs> <laughs> Beatol told him to. Yeah. You got it. I'm just being thorough, okay? Yeah. <laughs> what did what did my dad's large intestine look like again? I've just gotta be sure. Hold on, I gotta piece it all together. Let yeah. me it's like a puzzle, but it's rapidly decaying. Yeah. <gasps> we ought to leave this place as it is anyway, for when the police come... Battler pulls out both arms covered up to the sh elbows and blood. Uh, right. <laughs> that. I forgot crime existed. <clears throat> You're right. Battler Kun, are you okay? 
Buster Wolf. <laughs> I've cried all I can. I'm fine now. The police would surely find some evidence during their thorough investigation. <laughs> but we weren't adults enough to wait for that. I'd investigated the chapel in my own way, trying to grab the culprit before the police arrived. What I figured out was absolutely nothing. Frustratingly, I wasn't able to find a single hint. Come on, let's go out. Maria, we're going. Don't keep staring at it. You, but it was for me. <laughs> it's mine. All this candy's mine. <laughs> the police clean it off. It's my candy. <laughs> okay. Come, cool, Maria Shaba. Let us return. It's cold here. Father, mother, thank you for everything. I will definitely become a man who doesn't betray your expectations. Except for the one about not marrying furniture. I will betray that one. But just one. Just the one. George spoke his last words of farewell to his parents. Just seeing that battler followed suit. Dad, Kyrie-san. Just looking at their faces, it looked like they were sleeping, but that just made it even more painful. Forgive me. But one point of order. Rosa was with them in the chapel when Beatrice was Yeah. Proving. So how come Rosa's like, I have no idea what happened here? I, there's witchcraft going on, so yeah, may, right. she may well not have any idea. Forgive me for leaving you in a cold place like this. I'll definitely get whoever did this, no matter what. <laughs> What is this? What a repulsive scribble. Did the culprit draw it? This is worse than vulgar. How horrible. <laughs> when the door to the chapel was closed, we learned about that creepy scribble for the first time. When we first found this, it was already drawn here. It must have been made by the culprit. So supposedly the culprit was a witch, and this is a magic circle to summon a demon or something? Fool, you absolute buffoon. <laughs> buffoon. This is not a demon summoning circle. <laughs> you dare challenge me and my own. <laughs> Get your pencil, take notes. <laughs> this is the seven magic circle of the sun. Don't you even know that? <laughs> Ow. <laughs> There's something funny about Maria being all creepy and demonic and just being... And then someone just going... Smack Poke. her up, like smack her once upside the head. She's like, "Ow!" <laughs> hey, don't I always tell you not to make that creepy laugh? Maria, go on. What does it mean? Oh right, that's me. I'm Maria. <laughs> Whoops. I forgot my name. It's a magic circle used to escape from physical or mental bonds. In the part written around the circumference says, "The Lord has freed me from my chains." I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call the name of the Lord in Hebrew. Sacrifice of thanksgiving? That's not That's until next month. That's the wrong holiday. Amateur work. <laughs> so they killed somewhere uh, somewhere unrelated band. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I knew I got them mixed up. <laughs> so they killed father and the rest to use them as human sacrifices for this magic circle? Calm down, George Kuhn. This is the culprit trying to provoke us. I'm sure it doesn't mean anything. Thinking about it will only poison the heart. See, that's where I disagree. Even if you don't think that magic works or is real, like finding out the intent behind it can still give you insight into what the per per killer was thinking. Mm -hmm. Right. There's still value in figuring that out, even if you don't believe it, it's going to. And looks That's probably George, yeah. Looks like there's some English written here. Happy Halloween for Maria. <clears throat> I get it. And the key to open this door was handed over to Maria. Is that what's going on? Well, this is the chapel after all. Maybe Maria doesn't mean Maria Chan, but the Virgin Mary. In that case, you could read this as blasphemy against God in the name of Halloween. They say witches who make contracts with demons swear to defile God's name at all times. In that sense, this reality is a witch-like crime. 
Sounds like you know a lot about it. Did you get that from Maria? Yeah. Something like that. Hey, we got him. We got the correct characters right on the first try. Did we? I, I close enough. I couldn't tell the entire time. This is so hard. Who's talking now? Uh. The chapel. This is probably bad word reasoning. Chapel, huh? They went into all the trouble of calling them out here and killing them. Aunt Rosa, does this chapel have some special meaning? What do you mean a special meaning? Well, uh. Someone carried six human corpses all the way over here and set up these elaborate decorations. We can't tell if she called the six of them over here before killing them or if she killed them before carrying them over here. But either way, it'd take a lot of effort. Why did the culprit want six people to die here? By doing something that elaborate, there would be an extremely hard chance of some disadvantageous evidence being found with the police bar. It is inconceivable that the culprit was not a real lifer. The issue now is why the culprit went to all that effort. And that leads us to just one question. What meaning is there to this place that, where we found the six corpses? This chapel was important to Father. Ever since I was a kid, I was given strict instructions never to enter it. Yeah, but he came here once too, got in of trouble. Be, 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 be. The trouble was unrelated, I'm always in trouble. <laughs> but like I say, I'm a meddlesome little kid. <laughs> Aren't I just a dwarf? <laughs> An important chapel. Do I have some connection to the Ushiromia head family? I don't know. Father viewed this chapel as very sacred, and he treasured it so much that he had it redecorated several times. Couldn't anyone have mentioned this one last time we went around? No? No. <laughs> but as everyone knows, Father wasn't a devout believer, as his passion for black magic demonstrates. I've never heard of him coming here to offer his prayers to God. My theory was correct. He built a chapel just so he could not go to church at it. <laughs> it seems weird to say he doesn't believe in God when a lot of the black magic stuff he does evokes the name of um, yeah Christian uh, figures. Mm -hmm. Like, less perversely, does, you'd less have to... doesn't believe in God and more stands against God. Yeah, ex exactly. Like you, like if you're invoking, if you're invoking those, invoking those names to do your black magic, then you must believe they have power, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? As far as I know, Master has never come here. We could we even call this the sealed chapel and, um, uh, found eerie like a haunted house. Even though Father never approached it himself, for some reason, he made the servants give it a major cleaning several times a year. Felt like he kept it clean all the time so that it could be used at any moment. And even so, it's called the Sealed Chapel. <laughs> Maybe it's indiscreet to say this, but doesn't that sound pretty cool? Dr. Nanjo, you're an old friend of Grandfather's, right? Have you heard anything about it? I did ask about it once long ago, but I forgot exactly how he dodged my question. That's right, I believe we said something like, Someday, perhaps I too will be able to receive a blessing there. But unless a miracle occurs, that day will never come. What does that mean? What did he do in a chap? Oh, does he want it to get married to Beato? <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> like, like many other things on this island, it is built and maintained in, perpep in perpetuity just for when Beato arrives. He spent his entire life fantasizing about his beautiful fairy tale wedding when Beato will show up in a suit and carry him off in a bridal dress. There you go. <laughs> Get married in the chapel. There you go. That's absolutely that it. That is exactly it. That's absolutely what it. What would he do in a chapel? He couldn't mean his own funeral, right? I wouldn't believe that a Kinsha-san. It was a mind much more focused on the levering now than matters of car after death. So this does seem to be the root cause of the inheritance problem. Then what would he do in a chapel? Pray? Aren't confessions done in a chapel too? Anyway, it sounds suspicious. I don't know the reason, but just as Dr. Nanjo said, in Grandfather's eyes, all this about not being blessed unless a miracle occurred was set in stone as far back as this chapel's construction. How do you know that? See, it's clearly written over there. There's one of those, like, museum boards that are just, you know, held up at an angle so they can describe <laughs> the scene before. <laughs> and everyone, 
Oh right, we should go read that. <laughs> you, you know we never I'm thought to read it. Yeah, the ones you, like you find it at like a scenic overlook yeah. or whatever, and it's like yeah, <laughs> like the one we have just across the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look right there. George Onagy pointed to a relief with rusted gold letters on the arch above the door. Looks like some message had been written there in English. The rust made it clear that the message had been there ever since the chapel's construction. I'm not that good with English. What, what is it? This door is opened only at probability of... Oh! Sorry, my English sucks. I gave up after failing to finish even the first of the two lines. Only at the... It's about... Beato again. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like the others could read it properly. Uh, I think it went M, B, T, Q. So, uh, how many did that mean? I think, uh, hmm. Anyway, this is incredible. Adding up all the fingers on both hands doesn't even get you close. It really would be impossible unless a miracle occurred. What are you talking about? We'll find out. Shot roar. Quite a reminiscent of the old Hunter Chan who loved using gambling as a metaphor of whenever he got the job. Hey, come on, can everyone read it? Someone tell me what it means, too. They forgot to teach me how to read. <laughs> you got at least in English. How'd you get into high school without even being able to read this much? Ow. Ow. Mind your own business. <laughs> Hold on, I need to shut up the creepy kid for a moment. <laughs> I imagine when it's Battler, he's not even, he's not be like doing like a, you know, abuse, child abuse thing. Mm -hmm. He's just kind of giving her like just a light, tough. like oh. a light smack upside the head and uh, the back of her head and be like, tap. And she's like, ow. And he's like, come on now. <laughs> I, I also, what if we get through all eight chapters and she's completely innocent throughout and it's just the creepy know-it-all witchcraft kid act and there's she nothing be scary about her. She can't completely innocent because she does she apparently Beto shares information with her and he knows she knows something, right? Yeah. Still. So what's written there? Simply put it means something like this. Unless a miracle occurs, this door will never be open. Unless a miracle occurs, you will never be blessed. Grandfather's magic is based on astronomically low possibility. You have the magic based on astronomically low power ability. In other words, for miracle opening the door would probably require an incredibly bad amount of magical power. Yeah. Ow! Nice job, you can shut up now. <laughs> Rose is hot. Did you have Maria take English classes? Looks like it's useless to try and learn English unless you start when you're young, after all. The sealed <laughs> chapel, huh? I like how Maria doesn't call Battler out on it. <laughs> <laughs> she could, but she knows Battler's got <laughs> She knows Battler's in the. <laughs> oh, was the MBTQ million, billion, trillion, quadrillion? Maybe, yeah. Setting aside whether she was a witch or not, it's rumored that Beatrice actually existed several decades ago and was grandfather's mistress. This is um, just my imagination, but perhaps the master truly did love Beatrice Salma. However, he was already married, so they couldn't be united. I see. Beatrice was dead and could be revived with the magic of a miracle, then. Now that grandma now that grandmother's dead, he could marry her openly. <laughs> and if they married in this chapel, you end up with a pretty fairy tale like story, right? Called it. Well, I mean, what else was it gonna be? Called it. It's not a matter of calling it, it's like what else would it have been? I don't fucking know. I've never built a chapel. I don't think that story's so preposterous. Oh, that's Rosa. I don't think that story is so preposterous. It's a well-known fact that Father still loves Beatrice deeply. Also, even though I said I found it creepy, I seem to remember that the interior of the chapel was quite magnificent. The thought that Father built this chapel in the hopes of having a wedding with his dead mistress might not be that unlikely. By the time he built this chapel, Grandfather probably knew he would never use it as a church as long as he lived. But he prayed for the witch to be revived by some miracle. And he thought that if that miracle occurred, they could be married here. Oh, true. If you think of it that way, this would be a place of utmost significance to Badger Salma as well. Even though he knew the chapel would never be open. The story of tragic love. 
Also, rich people wasting money. <laughs> Even the Godasan was bigger than me. His words were touching. Everyone was silent, but it seemed they agreed with that view. I really don't know it was a chapel, now we can be open. They still probably dreamed of the day that a miracle would occur. But the miracle... <laughs> what is that? I need to look that one up. Colonel Sam was quite the romantic in his jungle day. I think I understand how he felt. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder. Then again, everyone went in it four times a year to clean, right? So much for it being the sealed chapel. Didn't we just go in ourselves? That wasn't a miracle or anything. He brought the key. Click, and we're in. That's all. This is ridiculous. Huh? What? Then what does that mean? What are you talking about? As far as I could tell, I'd just been joking around, finding myself a bit irritated by the sob story this was turning into. But then Aunt Rosa suddenly jumped on me with a really serious face. Aunt Rosa's face grew increasingly pale. She looked at the magic circle on the door, then at her hand, back and forth and back and forth. What is the matter, Rosasama? Hey, Godasan, the key to this chapel. Didn't Genji-san say it? He said there was only one. Huh? <laughs> Took you all way too long to figure it out. Yeah. When a kid pulls a prank, it sometimes goes unnoticed by the adults, and the kid who gets it all. Dude, it gets all disappointed. Such a prank that then gets sprung on someone much later. Can really make a kid's day. Maria's celebration just now looked a lot like that. I, I'm not getting what the implication we'll is see. here. Yeah, Maria had the key, but that was given to her by Beto, right? So. Well, yes, that's right. There was only one of those keys, the key to Master's Treasure Chapel. So there's only one with no duplicate. It's normally kept in a safe in the key box in the servant room, but. That's right. And Genji san said it had gone missing. So someone stole it, put it in an envelope, and handed it to Maria? And they did it yesterday. Ah, I get it now. Because now they're wondering about how... Okay, okay, I understand the implication. Sorry, I was a little slow on the cupcake there. What the... So in other words, isn't that strange? That's absurd. This is getting bizarre. What do you mean? I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Manager, was this funny for us? Goda and Nanjo's failure to understand definitely wasn't because they were stupid. They didn't know. They didn't know how long the only key to the chapel had been in Maria's possession. There's no mistake. It was locked up. I unlocked it. There's no doubt. Aunt Rosa kept closing the door, locking it, pulling it out to check the lock and opening it again. Her face was becoming pale again. Until I took the key out of Maria's envelope and opened this door, it was definitely locked. But this key was in an envelope placed in Maria's care. And that happened yesterday before noon. Matushar? But that doesn't make any sense. Confused go to face is very good. <laughs> I hate new Gota. Uh, why do I keep doing that to myself? Yeah. <gasps> You're right. Maria received a one-of-a-kind key from a woman calling herself a witch midday yesterday. In other words, from midday yesterday until this morning, when Rosa Sada unlocked the door, this chapel was a closed room. How'd they get those six people in there? And how did they kill them? I'm gonna have to diagram this out. The deaths of six people had shaken us badly. I'm surprised I didn't pick up on that. That's on me. <laughs> when we learned about the weird magic circle and the history of the chapel, we felt as though we'd figure at least part of this puzzle out. But that was all absolutely trivial. From midday yesterday until this morning, this chapel was a closed room. But our parents were with us until last night. How did the culprit get into this building? And how did they lock it up again? What are you trying to pull? Again? A closed room again? You trying to say you unlocked it with the power of magic? Don't take me for a fool! If you're demanding that I show you how to open locks with my power, I wouldn't mind. <clears throat> but that wouldn't be the same as me forcing you to surrender. You keep trying to explain it all with humans. Only when I've cornered all your theories completely will I have my victory. Come now, how will you undermine my defenses? 
What trick could a human have used to defeat them? Hmm? Okay, uh, stolen the key from Maria, unlocked it, relocked it after killing them, sealed it, put it back. Or Maria did it. Or Maria did it. And then resealing the envelope is you'd have to get into Kinzo's office, right? To put the, the seal back on it. Well, we assume that they had access to the seal already, given that they gave a sealed thing. True, 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 true. Yep. It's just like the closed rooms last time. Not enough information. It's impossible to reason like this. Any... Oh, wait, hold on. I forgot this is a meta battler. <laughs> it's just like the closed rooms. <laughs> Not enough information. It's impossible to reason like this. Any excuse can be made. Any trick could work. There's no way to reason it out. Ha. That again. There's not enough information. So you'll wait and see. Your information is uncertain, so it's impossible to use your reasoning. <laughs> this is always the excuse you humans use to let yourselves stop thinking. Who do you think you are, lowly human? Are you saying you can't even think unless you're like Laplace's demon, you incompetent fool? Actually, I'm thinking the one person uh, Maria would have trusted to take the key away from her is Beato. Yeah. Beato could have just been like, yo, Mar yo. Can I borrow that for can a Can I bit? borrow that just real, real quick? I'll give it back. Just real quick. <laughs> Besides, you make it seem like a lack of information works against you, but it's the other way around, you see? The more information you're given, the more it'll make you suffer. It'll only increase the strength of the compressor that's squeezing you. You wish you could be head empty, <laughs> no thoughts. I'll empty it out for you. <laughs> oh, in that case, let me say this. It's impossible to verify that this is a closed room in the first place. We're already talking about demons, I can play that game too. It'd be possible to prove this isn't a closed room. Just show how someone could have gone in or out and you're done. But it's impossible to prove this is a closed room. You could never deny the endless set of possible methods for getting in. In other words, this is one of those devil's proofs. This is a concept that a closed room is actually something that can never be proved. <laughs> Checkmate. Checkmate, atheist. Wait. <laughs> so, first you stop thinking with a lack of information as an excuse, and now this? See, Beto's not wrong, is what gets me here. <laughs> is that she... Battler's doing some really lazy things. <laughs> Battler and Beato both failed out of debate club. Battler for sucking at it and Beato for killing the opponents. That's what get is that they're both like insufferable. <laughs> insufferable. Like walking up to the edge of the stage, debate me. Debate me. <laughs> Very well. If that is your move, then I will accept it. Continue. First off, it looks like you're trying to claim that the chapel's a closed room. Just a short while ago, I spent some time looking around in there, and I couldn't find any way in or out except the door. But that just means I couldn't find one. It doesn't prove it was a closed room. If there's a hidden door or something that I wasn't able to find, your premise would be blown away completely. In other words, whether I managed to find a hidden door or not, you'd never be able to deny that there existed some method X that let you into the closed room. And this method X would be something that could be carried out without magic. For all, it's a hidden door. I'm sure this chapel there's some hidden door that's impossible to find. That's why there's no reason for me to reason it out, and magic is still impossible. That's so dumb. <laughs> I get that I, I get the argument in in like but like it's a finite it's a finite um set of real estate. Mm hmm You know. There's only so many sur like the, the amount of surfaces you could hide something like that on is finite. Mm -hmm. You could thoroughly search that and exhaust it. That's not eh, Oh, so you'll use that logic. <laughs> How naive. An expected move. Let me make my move in response. These closed rooms used in detective novels made by mere humans always seem utterly ridiculous to me. Why? Because they're used the wrong way. When a closed room appears in a detective novel, do you really think it's a closed room? You don't, do you? What trick did they use to make this look like a closed room? That's what you think. In other words, there hasn't been a completed closed room in any of the closed room murders that humans have built over the last century. Oh! Better not say that unless you want to face the wrath of the mystery fans. Christie's probably grinding her teeth at her grave. Hmm. 
But I am different. I'm not like other girls. <laughs> I have given birth to a true closed room. And I can demonstrate it. Why? Because I'm a witch. For the devil's proof, you only had to bring someone a demon to prove that they exist, correct? Well, I conveniently happen to be a witch, meaning that demons are my good friends, and I can bring you as many of them as you like. You're just saying that. They're not actually your friends. They are. I hang out with Asmodeus and Satan <laughs> every Wednesday. <laughs> we give each other toe jobs. That was, what? Oh, it's a mutual thing then. <laughs> Oh, I didn't realize that you were- oh, okay, that changes my view of you, actually. <laughs> I didn't think you were the kind of person to reciprocate a toe job. <laughs> Phrases I never expected to say in my lifetime. <laughs> Sounds great, Dead and the rest use a hidden door to enter the chapel, we're carried in through it. How do you play to beat that move? With this, regardless of whether they were alive or dead, the six definitely entered through the door. Huh? Dumbass, the door's locked, so how'd they do it? I opened it with magic and invited them inside to That shit. can't be true. Since I can't accept magic, there's no way I can accept that. You're lying. That door can be opened with some <laughs> trick. Yeah, a magic trick. Or maybe there's a hidden door, but I won't accept it any other way. Perpetual <laughs> check. That's what we call an endless repetition of moves in chess. It's the same as endless repetition as the discussion that won't advance because both sides deny the basis of each other's claims, like our game. In both game, most games even, this would be resolved as a draw, but that would put a terrible damper on our fun. We will have no draws. You will either accept me and submit to me, or you will deny me. Will I get a toe job in return? No. <laughs> well, there's your answer! <laughs> At least I agree with you there. We'll settle this without feel, just as you wish. <laughs> with good old fisticuffs. Hmm, put them up. All right. I like that attitude. So, I had a thought. I think I'll add a new rule to this game between the two of us. A new rule? I'll bet it's something that'll give you an advantage, right? Of course not. I'll give you the thing people like you always demand. The reason you always stop thinking and then moan about it is a lack of information. And if you are then given information, you start doubting whether the information is true or not by rejecting the source. Isn't that convenient? What clever little words to hide your own incompetence. I'm offering to eliminate that convenient excuse of yours. You should thank me. <laughs> you said they entered through the door, and I said that couldn't happen. Are you calling that an evasive answer? Exactly. So from now on, when I speak the truth, I will use red. When I'm not talking in red, I'm lying all the time. Sorry, a joke I read on Twitter like two rakes ago now makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is this? Keep explaining. No matter what magical move I use. You can always keep running away by chanting lack of information and by rejecting the source. No, I mean, how can I see what you're talking? I know, right? <laughs> Did you uh, give me synesthesia? Yeah. Oh. Just wait what else I've synesthesized for you. Wait, I can't wait to listen to music. Oh, you can. <laughs> Even though I would still win in the end that way, it would be extremely boring. Because of that, I'd be happy to give you the information and sources you so desire. However, you'll probably doubt each word I say. That isn't bad in itself. I also will use every possible move to make you submit. I don't dislike our posture of searching out our best moves for our own goals, but that won't make a game, so I set up this rule. Everything I speak in red is the truth. How do we know that, though? Are we just taking that... Like, there's absolutely no need to doubt it. Are you telling me to believe that? This is a game between you and me. In a game, the rules are sacred. Actually, you know what? I believe that justification. <laughs> yeah. Those who take that lightly are not qualified to play. Okay, I get you. I'll accept that rule. Even an elementary school kid can get into an endless argument and find fault with everything. Then let's start it up again, continuing where we left off. I'll say it one more time. 
Dad and the rest used a hidden door to enter the chapel, or were carried in through it. <laughs> then I shall repeat what I said. Regardless of whether they were alive or dead, the six definitely entered through How the door. How come I can see red while you're talking? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Which door, though? We'll see. Is there any proof? Stop. I will supplement the rule. When I speak the truth, I will use red. And when I do, I will not bear the responsibility of establishing that claim by showing proof. They will simply be facts and the truth. My reason is simple. Facts don't care about your feelings. Oh my god! <laughs> I carried out all No! The... <laughs> I get to deck you in the face! Okay, just Birdie, one. Birdie, back me just, up on Just the... one, though. Just one. You earned it. Ugh! Uh, okay. Feel better? <laughs> A little bit, not uh, gonna lie. Okay. Okay. You did kind of earn that one. Sorry, bitch. <laughs> Anyway, I carried out all the crimes with magic, so for any impossible crime, all I have to do is wave my magic staff and show you how it's done. But that wouldn't make a game. It would be as barbaric as ignoring victory and defeat in a chess match and punching your opponent in the face like you just did. I don't know what you're talking about, and you deserved it! I, I, I sure did. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Since you're a witch, there's no need for you to show evidence for what happened. Since you can do anything with magic, damn it! Talk about an unfair game! So, shall we resume once more? The six definitely entered through the door. I unlocked it with magic, dipshit. How will you get around this magic, this closed room? You didn't specify which door! <laughs> are, are we- are- I g Should we assume the most reasonable interpretation, or should we assume that she's- I gotta imagine that, since they're setting it up like this to be a big logic play, that- we should be paying attention to the literal phrasing of what she says in red. Probably. So when she doesn't specify the front door, and she just says the door, and doesn't specify what article, you know, what, what the article's referring to, mm -hmm. we should well, be wary of that. We'll see. The key! Genji said to the others there was only one key, but that's impossible to prove. The culprit secretly made a duplicate key! <laughs> only one key to the chapel exists. You borrowed it from Maria! Then what about this? Culprit made something other than a legitimate key and opened it. I don't know what, but maybe a wire, a tool for picking locks. What is this naive move? It is impossible to unlock the lock to the chapel. You're abusing this but privilege. The chapel's key. I'm speaking. You're abusing this privilege, aren't you? I'll do other colors. Fucking watch me. Oh, please. Don't push me. Oh, no. It's bad enough seeing the color of my hair in front of my eyes. <laughs> Although, it can be opened with the power of magic, right? Then what about this? There's something wrong with the door itself. There was some way to pass through it even while it was locked. So what that is, I can think of a few ways. It means like those big doors on the castle that have a smaller door in them. It's also possible they remove the hinges and then remove the whole door before entering. <laughs> is this the best that a century of human wisdom can manage, battler? When the door to the chapel is locked, it prevents any and all methods of entry or exit. So you just borrowed the key from Maria then, she would hand it to you. Assuming you can't use magic, right? <laughs> no questions asked, she would just hand it to you. Is it about time for checkmate? Not even close. You said the six people entered through the door, but you didn't say it was the front door! They would have entered through another door, the secret one! You talk too much, you incompetent she doesn't... fool. Then let me expand on my earlier move. The six definitely okay. entered through this front door. Okay, so I was wrong, but it, I was wrong about that particular instance, but I was right that we do need to pay attention yeah. to it specifically. But it will also get there. Yeah. That screwed up! The door was locked, it was impossible to unlock without using the single key, and yet six people entered through it! How? With magic you say? Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it! <laughs> Are we already seeing the limits of what humanity can manage? You asked a fucking kid! <laughs> I fucking did. Uh, I'm surprised Balor still hasn't come around to you just borrowed the key from Maria. Then shout that you resign. When one admits defeat, it's customary to shout it out and knock over their own king. To let it all out, huh? Yeah. Uh, I guess those are the things I can do without. <laughs> so, do you resign? Come on, I'm talking to you! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> then announce your surrender and knock your king over by kneeling. Then you may kiss my shoes. No. I'll let you. I'll let you. What do you mean? I'll allow let, you to. You'll. There's. <laughs> there were several assumptions going into the basis of that. There could be no greater joy than forcing a man like you to lick my shoes. <laughs> Damn it! Oh wait, no, we're back. It's useless, useless, useless. So I can't win against the witch? This isn't chess at all, I've just been made to take the losing side in a chess puzzle. Is quibbling about details and getting a draw the best I can manage? That's the one thing that'll never happen. Either I will surrender or you will. There can be no other resolution. What happened to that bravery you displayed when you said this would be torture for us both? Hey, hey, hey. What a disappointment. What a total letdown. Wouldn't you say, Ushiromiya Battler? Damn it, what should I do? What should I do? I can see it. I can see the place where I'll face checkmate. It's useless. It's useless. All my hard fought moves have been nothing more than me desperately moving my king around, running away from check. No matter how many times I move, I can't escape from check. So even without waiting for the next several moves, I can see checkmate in my future. Uh, damn it! <laughs> for a few more moves, I can see where I'll face. Where I'll face checkmate. Don't give up, Usha wrote me a battler. I can see myself getting closed in upon. And if I spin the chessboard round, I should be able to anticipate her next move, right? Remember what Kiri san said. When you're thinking about something, then the closer you get to the very, very end, the easier it becomes to anticipate. Spin it around. Spin the chessboard around. <laughs> what happened? You fell silent all of a sudden. Fear not. Surrender is but a momentary shame. After that, all that remains is the joy of entrusting your fate entirely to the hands of your new master, or to her feet, as it were. <laughs> Of course, will you get me while I'm going in for the sip? <laughs> Come on, cry out in resignation. I can't hear you. Speak oi, up. Oi, oi, Captain. <laughs> Speak up and say it clearly. What, you've never watched SpongeBob? <laughs> they haven't invented that one yet. Enough babbling. You're just refusing to listen. So I'll say it once more. I won't resign. Continue. Resume the game. Oh, very well. It is your turn after all. <laughs> I made the mistake of thinking this rule you made was your own weapon. However, I've realized that it can also become a weapon for me. It all comes down to this. Please, do give it a try. i focusing all this time on how they entered the closed room of the chapel. That approach was useless. It's useless. It's all useless. Spin the chessboard around. That's right. I was thinking about it backwards. This is how I should approach it. How is the chapel, which wasn't a closed room in the first place, made to look like a closed room? Here it comes. That thinking technique humans gave birth to over the course of a century. Give it a try. <laughs> Say this in red for me. If you can't, then refuse. Here I go. Does this man intend to reverse his defensive posture? Impudence. I get that the only way to enter the chapel- Oh wait, this is Meta Battler, right? I get that the only way to enter the chapel is through the door, <laughs> and there's only one key. But wait, the question is whether that key was really headed over to Maria yesterday before noon. My, but you're dragging this on. Do try and get to the point. It's something like this. We've been under the impression the key's been unusable since midday yesterday. So we've assumed that this was a closed room from midday and yesterday till this morning. I want you to hear you say that this impression of ours is a solid fact. Interesting. So you turned your reasoning not to the door, but to the key. Yesterday, Maria received an envelope from you. She didn't open it, but she might have felt it and known there was a key inside. It's not like she'd be able to confirm it absolutely it was the key to the chapel. Here's what I'm getting at. The thing inside the envelope given to Maria was a fake. If you think about what you're saying, it's ridiculous. This morning, Rosa definitely took an envelope out of Maria's handbag. And from that, obtained the genuine key to the chapel. But that's not what, that's not what he asked. It's yeah, not. see, see. I... <clears throat> it's even better. She didn't, she just gave her a fake to begin with and swapped it out. It wasn't a fake, as you suggest. <laughs> I know that much. I'll continue. In that case, when Maria first received the envelope, 
The thing inside that was definitely the same key to the chapel, right? Huh. See what I'm getting at? Midday yesterday, you gave Maria an envelope with a key inside. You told her she mustn't open it. Maria probably realized it had a key inside. Later on, Aunt Rosa used the thing inside the envelope to enter the, open the door to the chapel. And that's why we assumed it was the key to the chapel all along. That's the suspicious part. So th is this what you're trying to say? That when I entrusted Maria with a key, that key was a fake? And then by the time Rosa obtained it, it had been switched with the real thing? Yeah, that's it. Actually, that would make perfect sense because we know Rosa was in the chapel with them. So she could have easily sent it back with her. Mm-hmm. What's wrong, Beatrice, Summer? Been looking a bit pale for a while now, huh? Those close to me sometimes call me Beato. Beato will do. We're bros she, now. You can call me Beato. We're, we're close now? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're bros. Oh, I always wanted to be a bro. Yeah. Uh, it's your turn, Beato. The turn of the Golden Witch. Let's see you dodge this. <laughs> Very well. The key to the chapel truly was the object inside the envelope I gave Maria. I'll move forward. Can you repeat it in red? That envelope was completely under Maria's supervision until Aunt Rosa opened it. <laughs> if you can't say it, then say you refuse. Check. Ugh. I refuse. I've spun it all around with just one move. Now it's your king on... Check, Beato. You're king on the run, Beato. Hmm. I have a reason for refusing. It regards the definition of the phrase under her supervision. She doesn't have supervision, she has normal vision. Oh, that does make sense. <laughs> In its purest meaning, Maria would need to have her eyes on it around the clock for that to be true. But Maria didn't go that far. It may have been completely under her supervision when she took it out of her handbag, but after she put it inside, it disappeared from her field of vision. In that sense, the phrase under her supervision would be inappropriate, so I couldn't use the red. Nothing more. I'll bet that move hurt. Your face tells me you guessed the next one. Sorry. I'm kind to women. I don't hurt the- <laughs> Okay, you know what that was Fuck a lie. Fuck you, bro. That's a lie. And I never betray a woman's expectations. It's time for you to repeat it in red if you think you can. No one was able to touch Maria's handbag until Aunt Rosa took out the envelope. I will also refuse this one. I won't explain the reason. That's wrong. It's not that you won't explain it. It's that you can't explain it. That move gives us checkmate, doesn't it? Ugh. If you can't do it, then I'll explain. The key to the chapel really was in the envelope you handed to Maria. Then Maria put it in her handbag, and the next morning Aunt Rosa took it out and opened the lock. However, Maria didn't have the handbag under her complete supervision. There's no need for magic. It's a closed room trick that's possible for a human. The human culprit handed Maria the key. By making out Rosa use it the next morning, they created the illusion it was a closed room during that time. You can't deny the possibility that during that time, the culprit took the key from Maria's handbag, used it, and returned it by morning. Can you say that in red? Repeat it! If you can say, then say it! Objection, dumbass! <laughs> it's check again! N not yet. I remove the check. The envelope with the key in it should have been sealed with wax. Rosa took it from an unopened envelope. Really? Then try saying it! Repeat it! The envelope handed over midday yesterday. The one on Rosa opened her the same thing. That I can repeat. The envelope handed over to Maria and the one Rosa opened her the same thing. But it was resealed! <laughs> That's useless. It's all useless. That doesn't even matter anymore. I expected more from you. I figured if you were a bit better at reading between the lines, you'd resign right there. So I'm disappointed. You've betrayed my expectations. What? Who cares if the envelopes were the same? Envelopes can be sealed with wax over and over. The key inside is what's important. Ugh. Uh. This time, it's all over, Golden Witch. It's a real checkmate. I'll say it one more time. Repeat it. If you can say it, try saying it. The key to the chapel inside the envelope Maria received wasn't used even once until Aunt Rosa opened the envelope. Uh, how? How could I? 
against the lowly human. I'll keep on saying it, Beatrice. Repeat it! The key to the chapel inside the envelope Maria received wasn't used even once until Aunt Rosa opened the envelope. Ah. Oh. She's really doing an Ace Attorney breakdown? We're really doing this? Yes, we are. Hell yeah! If you get a yell, then say you resign. This settles it. This is the truth. Before Aunt Rosa obtained Maria's key this morning, at one point it passed into someone else's hands. They then used it, real sealed it, and returned it to Maria's handbag, making it look like it hadn't been used. This is a trick with trick with a cheap loophole. The assumption was that the key wasn't used because the sealing wax wasn't opened. Checkmate! There's no magic, and it's nothing more than a trick that's possible for humans. In, in that case, who do you say stole the key? Try answering. This time you try repeating. Wait, I can do the red thing too? <laughs> I can do that too? We'll see. That's right, I'm making you repeat things all the time. Probably have to answer every once in a while. But I refuse! My condition for victory is denying a witch's existence. I'll prove this is an impossible crime done with your magic. What's actually possible by human hands? I smashed your clothes room with something possible even for humans. However, I won't specifically investigate who the culprit is. Because I believe in humans! Because I definitely won't accept that there's a person among us who would steal the key from Maria, use it, and do something so horrible! <laughs> I give up, I resign. Just once, for this skirmish, I'll give up. But you really are naive, battler. Parting remarks are a loser's privilege. See as many as you like. <sighs> Damn, son. Jeez. <laughs> okay, that was actually... <laughs> I'm getting fucking tilted over here. Jeez, that was rude, battler. Damn, son. <laughs> Since you continue to deny my existence, you will eventually be cornered. After all, since you deny me, you will have to suspect those relatives that you can't stop loving. In the last moment, when you have to suspect one who is beloved to you, then you will surely accept my existence. No, he can still- well, you, here's the, you put yourself in the game this time, Beato. She, he can suspect you of doing it. <laughs> True, you have defeated me in this skirmish alone. However, that naive logic will definitely destroy you. You can't win against me after all. You should owe me a battler. Damn, this is getting good. Oh, this is getting real good. <laughs> Join us all next time for more Ace Attorney. Yes. I guess. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Smash, smash that like, comment and subscribe.